What's going on, boys? Today we're talking a bit about TE. Some of what people describe to be SE seems actually to be TE. People say SE is about sensory perception. Noticing things, being attuned to the material, that sort of thing. But I've noticed NFPs who are supposed to be blind to or completely cut off from SE, that sort of sensory perception, are keenly aware of the material. Let me give you two examples, and then we will discuss the discrepancy. Let's say someone is describing a forest to me. I am paying zero attention to the forest itself. And if I'm imagining anything about the forest at all, it will be fuzzy, obligatory. I am not paying attention to the description. I am not trying to create an image. I'm paying attention to the words they're using, their tone of voice, and things I already know about them or can deduce, and am trying to figure out what their words betray about them and how I can use that to create a fuller idea of who and what this person is and then fit them into a network of other ideas. Almost no images or imaging happen during that process. And that's in my head where images are supposed to be happening. You can be sure I am paying zero attention to anything noticeable about this person's physical form, unless it really stands out. Quick tangent. Disco Elysium. Great game, you should play it. It will create a set of tool vocabulary words you can use to articulate ideas. As in, ideas you know, you feel, you sense, but can't quite use because you don't have a specific word attached to them yet. In my example, I am using logic, rhetoric, and drama. My entire focus is on their words, cutting them apart and fitting them together into the correct story. INFPs, from what I've observed, use a different set of skills. They use conceptualization, visual calculus, and drama. They are taking snippets of images from reality, connecting them to a collage of images, one larger image, according to a story. They are absolutely paying attention to the physical, and they are taking snippets of the physical and adding them to an abstracted, conceptualized, larger physical they are coordinating in their heads, for effect. Have you ever noticed the way every ENFP will try to play show and tell with you? They want to show you material things and have you interact with them. And while you're interacting with them, they want to explain the collage they're building in their head. But if you aren't paying attention to that, you'll think they're just being cutesy or silly or, oh, this is a funny, eccentric, wacky-do person. There's nothing really to this. That's what I thought for a long time. But there absolutely is, and an INFP's description of her thought process alerted me to the fact there's something going on. And that is our second example. So she was explaining Annie and SI from her perspective. And it started similarly to the way I would start with Annie and SI. You get bored, you see something, your mind starts wandering, and you try to piece it together. But her example moved in a completely different direction. I don't remember what she said she touched, but she touched something and thought, I wonder if this is how a dragon scale would feel. And then she starts rolling in the NESI way. Let's make a list. 
Well, a dragon scale would probably feel larger than this, so if there were indentations in it, you would feel them easier than if you were to feel whatever this thing is she's feeling. Well, maybe the texture starts one way when they're born, but their environment certainly has an effect on the texture. Well, they're probably out in the sun a lot, and I know the sun can bleach things. It can have an effect on texture. So maybe a dragon scale would be a bit dry. Dried bones are different from wet bones. And then I wonder how it would smell. Are scales on real animals antimicrobial at all? I don't know, that's something I'll probably need to read about. But it must smell some kind of way, because alligators and fish smell different. There must be some kind of odor, and so on and so on and so on. All trying to piece together from real images what this fake image might feel like, look like, smell like, etc. Now, that listing and associating process is NENSI, but it is not TI NENSI. It's something else. This person's process is focusing 100% on the physical, on the material. Things an NTP wouldn't really think about. I think they are not performing FE rhetoric, NESI. I think they're performing TE visual calculus, NENSI. Meaning TE has a tremendous physical material presence you almost never hear talked about. I think that's because we don't hear from STJs about that kind of thing often, and the other four TE types are also SE types. Meaning, NFPs get written off as wacky, we don't hear about TE, or at least that side of TE, from STJs, because we don't, there aren't many around for us to discuss this stuff about, and all TE's physical components in the TE-SE types get attributed to SE, because when you read about SE, you think that means physical. Anything physical and material must be SE. There's a reason NFPs, in general, have an easier time dressing fashionably than NTPs do. They have a better sense for it, it takes less work. There's a reason NFP writers hold the reins tight with their writing and spend so much time on details. There's a reason NFPs notice things in the physical world an NTP would miss. Have you ever noticed that? The way an NFP will make a useful and correct observation about something you would have never in a million years picked up on. Speaking of Disco Elysium earlier, I watched Wooly, commonly typed as an INFP, I think that's the case, play through the game. He picked up on so many little things that are right, I think, I never would have noticed, and ended up being useful for understanding the plot and the characters. Conceptualization. Art Cop. I recommend watching that playthrough if you never plan on playing Disco Elysium. It's funny, but it's also fascinating if you like trying to understand people. TESI types are supposed to be perceptively physically blind, but they aren't. In fact, they have keen perceptions. So, how do we separate TE SI from SE anything else? Because SE has that physical element, but it seems to be a different kind of physical, one, and something else related to perception, two. I've noticed NFPs are less inclined just to go out and see the world, just to see the world. It always has to be some kind of meaningful bullshit. Beta Quadrant types will touch grass just to touch grass. An NFP thinks, I need to go out hiking to connect with myself, or at least to try to. God, I have to try. An NFJ thinks, it's fucking nice out. Who's trying to chill, smoke some loud, feel me?
My mother, ISTP, was taking care of a donkey. She was inside playing a coloring game on her phone, and then she said, I think I'm going to go outside and try to make a bicycle chariot and see if I can get the donkey running fast enough to drive me around places. Why would you do that? I don't know, it's nice out. There was an INTJ who spent hundreds of dollars going to different massage parlors just to see who would jerk him off, just for the fun of doing it. Now, there is a goal aspect there, but it is distinct from a TESI goal aspect. An INTJ drives around and sinks hundreds of dollars trying to get jerked off. An INFP, a non-religious INFP, goes to a Catholic church to experience the discipline of organized religion. Both are physical, they are completely different. A TESI type won't go out unless there is an objective according to their conceptualization or visual calculus. An SE type will go out and experience new things just to experience new things. Another side note homework example thing. Ask an SI type what their favorite food at a specific restaurant is and if they usually order it. Then ask the same question to an SE type. The SI type, even if they're a TE type also, will tend to order the same things. An SE type will tend to order different things. They might have a favorite, but they mix it up and they keep it mixed up. Eating the same things over and over again seems to drain them, where an SI type will eat generally the same things for years and enjoy them. So we've established there is a keen physical material aspect to TE that gets brushed over, because if you don't have SE, you can't be physical. NFPs exist in visual calculus and conceptualization. Also, another side note, I had an ENFP professor. He specialized in not historical texts, but the histories of texts. Different editions over the years. What were the discrepancies? Why were there discrepancies? What was the history behind them? What does the physical or, the, yeah, the physical version of a book change about the way one reads that book? Ulysses was labeled pornographic for a long time and was sold in porno adult stores. What is the person who buys Ulysses in a porn store's experience with the book versus someone who buys and reads a literary edition? Visual calculus and conceptualization. TE approaches the physical as an arrow. SE approaches the physical as a funnel. TE says, in the material world, let's get one thing that's useful. SE says, let's get everything for shits and giggles. But there is another aspect to SE I'm having a hard time pinning down. Because when you're discussing SE, you're also discussing NI, and people spend most of their time fixating on NI. Mystical and abstract thinky STPs are weird. NJs will focus on symbols and their meanings. They will get premonitions about things, and people attribute all those traits to NI. But STPs, including ESTPs, get the same things. But the way they approach those things is different. NJs get one of these fixations or predictions and say, that's it. That's reality. This is what it is, and this is all it'll be. STPs will get one of these things, and then they'll space out. They might not reach a conclusion, but the conclusions they do reach, from what I've observed, tend to be more accurate. I suspect that has to do with SE. With NJs, their predictions or their analyses are usually useless but sometimes more useful than anything. But they have lots of them. STPs don't have many, but when they have them, in my experience, it's not a prediction, it is a prophecy. What they say is going to happen. It's a little disturbing. 
and you'll notice STPs get weird about common descriptions of SE. They act like it's not getting everything. The common description isn't. But when you try to figure out what it is, away from the common description and toward really whatever it is, you come up empty-handed. In summary on that, I don't know what's happening, but it's something important, and it has more to do with SE, an aspect of SE that's so far unexplored to my knowledge, and little to do with NI, or not everything to do with NI, the way it's normally presented. So, in overall summary, TINE is logic, rhetoric, and drama. For TENE, it is visual calculus, conceptualization, and drama. There is a keen physical material aspect to TE you need to be aware of if you are studying or trying to connect with TE types, especially if they don't have SE, because if you're unaware of this aspect, you will write things off you should be noting down. SE's standard description holds, but many things attributed to SE are TE. SE by itself doesn't really have an objective beyond gathering new experiences and sensations. I think most material detective work comes from TE or scaffolded by TI-SE, but they are distinct. And then finally, SE has something going on I don't understand yet that goes beyond the common description and everything I just said. I don't know what it is, but it seems important, and we will be keeping our eyes open. But that about rippity wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching, because I certainly enjoyed making it. I normally have 8 ounces of coffee in the morning, but I had 24 ounces of coffee in the afternoon, and I think it's noticeable. A like if you enjoyed, because it helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't, because we do this shit sometimes, and comment your thoughts, because I love hearing from you. What is this aspect of SE that is so important that isn't completely NI we are missing. I would like to figure that out. But thanks again for watching everybody. Really, we have a lot of fun on this channel. So much fun. In fact, you can drink a sweaty amount of fun. A stressful amount of fun. And still enjoy it. That's so much what we have on this channel. And I look forward to doing this with you guys again in the future.